All right, I'd like to call to order the bylaws committee meeting for May 2nd, 2024 of the Niles Main District Library. At 10 on 2 a.m.? Uh, yes. Okay, let me call roll. Um, President Keene? Present. Vice President Trunko? Yes. And I am here, Executive Director Valerie Marshall. So we have a quorum. All right, Let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are no public comments. So we can jump right into the unfinished business of the bylaws. This is our second meeting. The first meeting we went through and came up with some suggestions that we might like to bring to the board as a whole and I think we're just going to continue with that this morning so um, we have a couple more things that we've been looking through some more uh, bylaws from the Secretary of State's office and our Niles Main District Library trustee manual that we might want to add some things from to the bylaws just for the record, noting that the trustee manual has been rescinded. Thank you. Uh, so do we want to just go through from top to bottom like we did last time, or do you want to start with? No, I don't have anything in particular to start with, so we can go top to bottom okay. if you want. Give me one second to open this up. I was working on this right before I came in. Are we starting top to bottom reviewing the trustee manual and the suggested bylaw template from the state or are we starting with our bylaws? Um, I, I thought we'd be starting with our bylaws but we've already done that, right? So maybe yeah. it makes more sense to go the other way. Yeah, I think we did. We made it through we all did. our bylaws last time, right? Yeah, <laughs> so then. Okay, so let's look at the um, Secretary of State's. Okay. Comparison to ours. Um, so regular meetings, um, regular meeting of the Board of Library Trustees of the Niles Main Public District Library shall be on the third Wednesday of each month. The meeting shall be at the library at seven o'clock. The meeting shall be open to the public and noticed in advance. I'm just reading it out so the public can hear what we are looking at. Um, at the beginning of each fiscal year, the board shall, by ordinance, specify regular meeting dates and times. The secretary of the board shall then provide for the local newspaper the schedule of regular meetings of the board for the ensuing fiscal year and to post the schedule of meetings in the library and the offices of the corporate authority if different with dates, times, and places of such meetings. Um, that looks a lot like what we have in section six number c mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's some additional stuff in there is that maybe we want to use as far as like that last section from like the secretary of the board down to the end um unless we put that in duties of the secretary this language actually pulls from the Illinois Public Library District law and it's actually part of the um, 75 ILS, ILCS 16-30 um, through 55.32 and it talks about when the board has determined um, I'm sorry, that is a different section. I apologize, let me current the record. But it is in the law where we have to publish um, the schedules of the meetings. I feel like we have that in a different section of our bylaws. I think that we do. Um, let me see. And my apologies on the record, This the law itself is like 65 pages long, so it takes a minute to find where we're looking for.
So I am currently looking at, and for the record as well, per OMA, even if these uh, materials that we're looking at were not part of the packet posted on the website, we are able to bring in additional items to refer to as long as we are discussing within the topic of the bylaws that was listed on the agenda. So I have pulled up a calendar from the Illinois Library Association that says that as of January 1st, the schedule of regular Library Board of Trustee meeting dates, including the time and location, must be prepared and made available to the public. It may also, in an alternative, be presented at the beginning of the fiscal year instead of the beginning of the calendar year. So that's something that the board can determine, whether we want to do it at the beginning of the calendar year or the fiscal year. Right. Do we have a recommendation for our committee? I think it's been working fine the way it is. I don't know. Have we been doing calendar year or fiscal year, though? I'm not sure myself fiscal because year, I'm, I'm new. Fiscal year? Yeah. Okay. Fiscal year, I think yeah. fiscal year. Because I don't think that's actually spelled out in our bylaws, right? We've just been doing it that way. Do we want to spell it out in the bylaws or just leave it as is? I think we should spell it out. Yeah, spell, spell it out? Yeah, spell okay, it so out, fiscal yeah. year. So, okay, so this wording then, as recommended by the, by the state library, seems to work because it does mention fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just going to add that in. Mm -hmm. All right, special meetings. There's a paragraph about special meetings. Um, let's see if it's any different than what we have. Yeah. Oh, it is because it says, okay, special meetings shall be held at any time when called by the president or secretary or by any three trustees. And I think we have four trustees in our. We do. Yeah. But Which is I, a majority. It's a majority, but I would, the question that I had with that is like a quorum for us is three. So if we actually did have three people want it, and would that justify a meeting? Which a quorum is four for seven, since we have a seven member board. So I think we have it as three. Mm. Okay. I think we were told it was three. That's why the three of us can't be in a room talking about anything. Four together. members well, of the board so can institute a quorum for a transaction of business. Yeah, quorum for it's meetings uh, is four. Seven, majority of quorum would be three per Open Meetings Act. That's why you can't meet to discuss things because it's a majority of a quorum versus quorum is four to actually take action. So, so if three of us were to meet, though, that would be a violation of OMA? It would, even though you can't take action. Gotcha. You're still meeting as a majority of a quorum. That's confusing. Okay. I, I'm okay with sticking with the four. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Because you can't take an action anyway without four, so right. even if only three wanted to do it. Right. So then I would say by any four trustees. Yeah. Do we have anything, in, and maybe I'm missing it, but four special meetings? I don't think we have a, a, an actual... There's a small section on page four under organization meetings, part D, says special meetings may be called by the president or the secretary or by any four trustees. Yeah. That's the only thing it says. I think we should add something like they have in here, except in the case of a bona fide emergency. Let's see, wait, I didn't read through all of it yet, but. I'd be okay adopting this whole paragraph. I agree. What is the, um, any new medium which has filed an annual, annual request, what does that mean? Except in the case of a bona fide emergency to board members and to any new medium which has filed an annual request for notice. That I don't fully understand. That we would have to ask Dennis probably. Okay. So we are agreed though that we're going to leave it for four trustees to call? Yeah. And then he can ask Dennis what the 
any new medium which has filed an annual request for notice. And I would assume that if it was something we were okay with, then we could just take this whole special meetings yeah. paragraph and make it uh, D? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way it's a little more detailed. Mm -hmm. I like that. So for the recording, I'll read out the paragraph we're talking about. Under special meetings, um, the State Library recommends this wording. Special meetings shall be held at any time when called by the President or Secretary or by any, we're going to maintain four, trustees of the board, provided that notice with the agenda of the special meeting is given at least 48 hours in advance except in the case of a bona fide emergency to board members and to any new medium which has filed an annual request for notice under the Open Meetings Act. No business except that stated in the notice and agenda shall be transacted. Notice and agenda shall be posted 48 hours in advance on the front door of the library except in the case of a bona fide emergency. Do we want to add online also? Not just on the door of the library? We can. We can say on the website. Then if people can't come here, and you know, people want to see the agenda and they can't walk over to the library, they can see it online. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is annual meeting. An annual meeting shall be held in X month for the purpose of hearing the annual reports of the librarian and committees. The report should include a summary of the year's work with detailed account of the receipts and expenditures. Of, so this is like the budget, a budget for the following year and other information according to statute. This is not something that we do. No, it isn't. Is this something you've done before, Valerie, in your other? We did not do it at Schiller Park Public Library. I feel like maybe we already do this stuff in other meetings. Yeah, I think we just do it throughout the year. I don't think we have a certain meeting for that, so I'm okay leaving that yeah, out. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Uh, quorum, a quorum at any meeting shall consist of four board members, is the same. Yep. Board of Library Trustees of the Niles Main District Library is charged with the responsibility of the governance of the library. The board will hire a skilled library director who will be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the library. The board will meet at least once per month. These meetings will be open to the public and noticed in advance. The agenda and or information packet for the meetings will be distributed to the board by the library director one week prior. Uh, I'll just keep reading for now. <laughs> Go yeah. Any board member wishing to have an item placed on the agenda will call the library director in sufficient time preceding the meeting to have the item placed. Any board member who is unable to attend a meeting will call the library to indicate that he or she will be absent. Due to the fact that a quorum is reached for each meeting, this phone call should be placed as far in advance as possible. Um, the agenda distributed the Friday prior to the meeting. Mm -hmm. I have questions about that. Okay. For meetings such as this, mm -hmm. it, would it still be the Friday prior to the meeting, or should we set a certain number of days prior to the meeting? so that it's a bit more clear for committee meetings and special meetings on how we can proceed. Well, then maybe we should put for regular board meetings the Friday prior and then committee meetings maybe 72 hours prior or 48 hours prior. I'm comfortable with that if... Yeah, yeah that's, that's one okay. of the things I had actually read on too. So, like, I, yeah, I think the Friday before a regular meeting, whenever possible, because we know that, like last time, was it last month that I don't, there was a meeting recently where something happened and we got them on Saturday, I think, but my mistake. No, that did happen yeah. once. So whenever possible. Um, or just if there is an emergency, the executive director will notify the board if there's a delay. That's okay. fine. Yeah. And then 48 hours for special meetings? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see why we need anything. Like for this, we didn't need any. I, I, a lot of this stuff when we got here today. So yeah. I don't, yeah, I would say 48 hours, because that's what we put the agenda up, right? So mm -hmm. that way it's not double work that you deliver it 72 hours prior and then something changes. And right. 48 hours to me is fine. Perfect. Thank you. And then do we want to add anything about the 
wishing to have an item placed on the agenda will call the live call or email or will notify the library director maybe well and I think we should put a and time on mm -hmm. there insufficient time so what about um, no later than 5 p.m. the Wednesday before the meeting sure I wouldn't say the Wednesday I would say one week before one the meeting week before the meeting Okay, because even for special meetings and things like that, oh. although special meetings can be called 48 hours in advance. So, so one that week be before, regular, one week regular, before meeting. regular meetings? One week before regular meeting. That's fine. 5 p.m. one week before. Do we want to say something like late submissions will be added at the discretion of the executive director or not at all? I would do not at all. Okay. First thing you get into that, if what happens if somebody doesn't get on and then like say mine does but yours does you know what I mean then you get into that tit for tat thing I would just say late submissions will automatically be put on to the following meeting the following month's uh -huh. meeting and that's it that's what I would do okay. but or they just leave it I would I like the wording in there late okay. submissions will automatically be added to the next month's meeting okay but I think that I might at some point get a question about what if someone really needs something discussed so at whose discretion should it be because having it at my discretion alone when it's a board matter I don't know if that's the direction we should go or whether it should go to the board president or board president and vice president or all of the officers that's a good question um, so that we can bring that to the board and yeah we can bring that as a question to the board um, the board will meet at least once per month. Can we add in there something maybe of unless unless voted on differently or something? Because I don't know if we, like one of the meetings that killed me was the December meeting. Like there's so much going on in December mm -hmm. and we still had that meeting. I, I wonder if we could push some of that off to the January meeting and not have a meeting in December. That's just a thought that I've had since we had a December meeting. You know, and we got holidays and everything else mixed in there. You got people out of town, travel and stuff. I know we were able to have everybody here this month, but we don't, this, this December, but I don't know if December, looking around other libraries I checked in with and uh, even like in our own village, like nobody has a December meeting. So I don't know if we need to have a December meeting. My challenge with that is how do we pay bills during that month? Because when I first started at Schiller Park, they didn't have meetings two months of the year. Okay. And in those two months, I would get calls from the people who didn't get paid. And then we, I eventually got to an agreement with the board that I could move forward with paying bills and they could be retroactively approved at the next board meeting. But that would be my question before we cancel a meeting about payment of bills. Yeah, I'm not saying we have to cancel it, but it's not, I just want to make sure that we have the option because like, I know like a couple of school boards in the area, they don't have a July meeting. Mm -hmm. And they stole, but like you said, they, yeah. the superintendent has the ability to pay the bills and sign off on mm -hmm. everything, and then they just, when they come back in August, then they just approve it. It's like one of those things, there's no questions, you just yeah. get to approve it. It's, it's done already at that point. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if there should be a meeting that we all don't have to, like, you know, that if we have it in there, I just don't want to say that we have to meet once a month, because then if we cancel it, then mm -hmm. somebody's going to be like, oh, well, now you're violating your own bylaws. Right. You can say the board will be scheduled to meet at least once per month. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, because I mean, even state houses and everything take time off. It's mm -hmm. just right. like, I don't know if we have to have a meeting 12 months of the year. Especially when we have a lot of other special meetings that come up and stuff. Okay, next paragraph is board members are not to be compensated pursuant to statute but will be reimbursed for necessary and related expenses as trustees. To be effective, board members must attend most meetings, read materials presented for review, and attend an occasional library system or other library related workshop, seminar, or meeting. The library director will make the dates of those workshops known to the board in a timely manner. 
It is the goal of the Library Board Trustees, sorry, of the Board of Library Trustees to have each member attend a minimum of one library system or other library-related workshop, seminar, or meeting during each calendar year. Board members using their own vehicle will be reimbursed at the rate allowed by the IRS for travel to and from any library system or other library-related workshop, seminar, or meeting. Board members are not exempt from late fees, fines, or other user fees. What that last sentence is in reference to? Oh, so board members who have library cards if oh, the library okay. has fines. Gotcha. I would like to add, like some of the workshops in, like or some of the seminar or, or things, or maybe and maybe this doesn't have to go into bylaws, but maybe we could just have that as a board, like when ILA is and all of those things. Like I don't know when those are, but I like we've talked about. It. I'd like to attend some mm -hmm. of those. Um, so maybe we could get that to the board, and this is just as conversation but maybe we could get that to the board when these things are so we can start seeing who does want to go to those things because I know we've been sending emails myself and President Keen as they come up uh, yeah I just don't know like I know like there's that one in October that we talked about I forget which one is that I, I, like, yeah I like we talked about that already but like I know the email hasn't come out yet but if I could put like I'm gonna put I already have that on my radar but mm -hmm. if we could just start look maybe putting things out that we know that are a year out mm -hmm. Because I know, like, as something usually ends, they are announcing the next one, just so we all have it. Yeah. Maybe we have a warning document or something, because there's going to be ones that I'm going to want to go to, and I have the ability and the time to go, so mm -hmm. it's silly if I don't attend some of them. Yeah. What I like about having this listed in the bylaws is that it shows that the board has agreed that they will attend a minimum amount of training, which I think is really nice. It, I mean, and you don't have to state... It, it does say once a year you could make that more frequent, less frequent, but having it in Not here less. I think is... Not less than Not less than I know, but <laughs> I'm just saying we have, the recommendation could be a different time frame, mm -hmm. but I think it's nice to have that commitment within the bylaws itself. Well, I wonder if we should set like a month where we're going to do it. Like, you know, new board members get sworn in in May, so maybe we do something in June every year for a training, so that way when that new person comes, those new people or new persons come on. June is a tough month because the new budget starts July, right? So we're still usually talking about budget and things of that nature. Yeah, but this is for trustee training. So if yeah. we have to be here for another three or four hours, so be it. It's just like for somebody like myself who, you know, I'm new to the board, I'm a year on to the board, yeah. but my first training is going to be on May 6th. It's almost a year Typically, that's not the case. Typically, the um, executive director has an orientation planned out okay. with new trustees. And um, at my former library, that was one of the duties assigned to the vice president of the board to do training for I new trustees. I have it in here. Well, yeah. Yes. So I didn't know that you did that, though. We did that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, and I have an orientation plan that okay. I can implement with new trustees. I just wasn't here when you all started. Um, but that's usually done separately because orientation is such an extensive process and there are so many resources that we wouldn't put it in the board meetings because it would make the board meetings very long okay. to do orientation. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, we, when I was working, just to start it on the different duties for the officers yeah. because we had talked about adding some things to the vice president, I, that's one of the things I had mm -hmm. put under there too so that the awesome. vice president and the director are in charge of the orientation materials and, and stuff like that. And then you guys awesome. can do it whenever. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that, that's, that works out well. But something else, like what you're talking about having, um, maybe we could develop a calendar and it wouldn't necessarily or probably even at all be part of the bylaws, but like a monthly calendar of what, so the trustees know what do we do in this month and what do we do in this month. And in that we could include what trainings are held annually in that month. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I typically also try to put them in my director's report when I see something come up. And like the, I know it's not a training, but like the Laconi banquet, right. it's also an outreach to the public opportunities yeah. for the trustees. Mm -hmm. No, but I do like that. So that way, like, you know, I mean, as silly as it'll sound, but on every calendar you'll see on that third Wednesday, your meeting's there. And then you'll see budget time. We're going to be doing budget in this month. We'll probably have right. extra meetings. So yeah. you could start planning around your and life as well. Every year when we could include the dates of what what is the last possible date to pass the budget or the levy or whatever. Absolutely. So we have, it in we have a calendar like that as far as passing the budget and things like that from our lawyer. 
Yeah, no, but the dates change every year. They do. Yeah. So he prepares that every okay. year. Okay. But I wonder if that's something we could take in house to do, just so we don't have to pay our lawyer to do that. Um, because they're all legal dates, most libraries get their calendar from the lawyer. Okay. KTJ's is actually a very well renowned calendar that a lot of libraries use. All right. Yeah. I'm fine with that then. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so, do we want to adopt any of this wording of that second paragraph of the Board of Library Trustees? I think we adopt it all. I mean, yeah. People have trained, go to training, and yeah. that they could just not care and not go. Right, and that, you know, it's kind of without words acknowledging that you do actually believe what libraries are doing and about. Yeah. Um, when it does go nicely with the commitment that everybody uh, on our board has made to continuing education, I think it reflects that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we got the whole thing. Um, okay, next one is officers and elections. The officers of the board shall be a president, vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. Those officers shall be elected by a ballot vote for two-year terms at the regular meeting in the month of May, correct? Yes. Yeah, but okay. the, new, the new ones are sworn in in May. Right. Uh, the president shall not serve more than two consecutive terms unless by unanimous board consent. In the event of a resignation from an office, an election to fill the unexpired term of that office will be conducted by a ballot vote at the next regular meeting. I would like to say, uh, one term at it, like it should be one term, so that way we don't have somebody in place for four, six years if they control the. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't want. I think that too much of one person could be a problem at all. It could be. Yeah. Um, what's my thought about this? I know one year is too short. We talked about that. Yeah, you, one year is not enough. I mean, you're just now one year in, and it's you're just understanding everything you have to do. So I think if you did two years, plus it's also a lot for somebody to do. For it's a, it's yes. a lot of work, and it shouldn't just fall on one person. What if no one else wants to be the president, though? Then what? I would suggest leaving in the wording that says "unless by unanimous board consent." because that still gives the option of having another consecutive term if the full board agrees to it. So if nobody wants to do it, but let's say nobody wants to do it next year, but you said, I'll, I'll stay on and do it, then we can unanimously vote you in. Unless that person doesn't vote for themselves. I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> We've been in such weird situations here. I'm trying to think through yeah. every possible. You could say majority instead of unanimous or super majority. Supermajority. There we go. The two supermajorities. So, so yeah. supermajority of five? Yes. Okay. So the president shall not serve consecutive terms. So we want to, we're going to take out more than two, right? I don't think anybody should serve more right. than two. Right. Any, so any officers? No officer, no, no, F, officer. no officer shall serve two consecutive terms. In the same office? Yes. Yeah. Shall serve consecutive terms. Terms in one in one office in yes. the same office in the same office. That way, if someone wants to be a different type of officer, you're not prohibited right. from. Yeah, so like if I wanted positions. to go from VP to treasurer, then mm -hmm. I could do that. Yeah, unless by supermajority vote of five. Of five, supermajority of five. Just so it's defined clearly. Yep. Okay. I think that protects everybody with this as well. Yeah. In the event of a resignation from an office, an election to fill the unexpired term of that office will be conducted by a ballot vote. Okay. And that seems to go along with, I know what Grove has that, and I believe Skokie has that too, mm -hmm. that it's just one, you get one term in each spot. I think it also has the ability for other trustees to step up and 
take some of the responsibility and the load also. It doesn't fall on the same two or three people all the time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next one. Uh, president. The president shall preside at all board meetings, appoint all standing and special committees, serve as ex officio member at all, of all committees, and perform all other such duties as may be assigned by the board. The president shall be the only spokesperson for the board of library trustees in all advisory or disciplinary action directed to the staff. The last, the last line. Uh -huh. I'm not sure about. Plus, I sort of. It seems like our president thing meets some of this, but adds some more on there. Yeah. Because we also talked about making it uh, to nominate. Right. Versus appoint to the committees. The last time, I almost like ours better. Ours does also say appoint. No, we said we were going to do nominate last time. Changing. Yeah, we okay. crossed that out to nominate. Is that what you have as well? Um, or am I incorrect on that? I don't have that note on here. Oh. But that doesn't mean it didn't. Uh, it's, the, it's the only note that I have on the um. president. Was we, we had talked about crossing out a point and then nominate. And we, so we're meaning that we have to, the board has to approve the nominations? Yeah. So in other words... You could spell everybody out, but then we bring it to the board, and then just like a regular vote, mm. it gets put on. My suggestion would be that the president assigning someone sticks unless that person cannot or does not wish to do it, instead of bringing it to a full vote. Because then what if there are uh, in-between board meetings where a committee needs to be assigned or updated or changed? I just worry about it getting overloaded by. Um, it gets overloaded by one person's opinion or friends or things like that, and then it doesn't. It may not protect the library the way it should. Oh, I understand that. I just, I just would like an answer to the question of what happens in between meetings if something needs to move forward with a committee, and that might be a question to pose to the full board when mm -hmm. we bring this up. Either that or the committee may have to postpone that particular meeting. Excuse me. Can we, we can't continue, right? Yeah, there's two of us. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Right. And then we'll swoop. Yeah. So that's my thought is that if we make it more of a board thing, then there could be a conversation. And it could it could be a consent agenda item. I know across the street when George makes his appointments. Oh, oh, that was fast. <laughs> yeah. That was not the phone call no. I was okay. expecting. I was thinking maybe we could even do it like a consent agenda item where it's just listed so that we list everything out and then if anybody has, if the majority isn't going to vote for it, then we could go talk about it. But we don't have to talk about each one for each committee. I know like across the street when in May, I believe, May or June, they do the appointments. That's what they do. They list everything, they read it all out, and then it's just voted on. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just protects it a little bit better, mm -hmm. but that's just my opinion. I'm okay if you guys want to keep it the other way, but uh, um, why don't we bring it to the whole board? Okay, yeah, see what the board thinks. At Chiller Park, the president would assign committees every two years and have a list for what your committee assignment was every two years, and then the board. They didn't vote on it, but they saw what the assignments were and, and could discuss it, but they were in place in advance. It was just my question, because at, at um, Schiller Park, sometimes someone had to step down from a committee for personal reasons, you know, if you have an emergency, things like that. Yeah. And then how do you make changes in the middle of all of this? But it also depends on the size of the committees that we have. Because the uh, president, as an ex officio member, if we are below quorum for a committee, can still come. So sometimes we would call the president to come in if we didn't meet quorum for a committee. Like if it's two people, but then the president is always ex officio, so that makes three. Mm -hmm. It's just something we might want to spell out and discuss with the board so that we have it in writing of how we're going to do it. Well, and do we want to leave it, do we want just the president to be 
next officiato, or do we, maybe we do president or vice president, so if the president's at work or the president can't, is out of town, then the vice president can step mm -hmm. in. Since it's an, that would give something else to the vice president, too. Because you have to be careful with that, because if there are two ex officio members who show up, then you're going to get a quorum of the majority of the board, and you can take action. Uh, That's why it's usually only one okay. officer who's like assigned. This president thing, yeah. But there are also committees that have five members at other libraries. So you just have to be careful that you don't take action within a committee, even if you have a quorum of the full board. Yeah. You can still do it. You can have committees of any size. It's up to the library. I just want to bring that to your attention. Yeah, no, that can get sticky and, yeah. and scary real quick. So maybe we just leave it as president then. Otherwise, even if you accidentally did something, you'd be in violation and it could be a disaster. Yeah, we just don't want to take votes on anything yep. outside of a regular board meeting or a special board meeting of the full board. Okay. Um, so we're back to what we have on ours, right? The president of the board shall preside at all meetings of the board and may vote on motions before the board. He or she shall sign such documents on behalf of the board as required shall nominate or appoint, we're still bringing that to the board, right? Or no, we just decided no? No, I think we're, I think, I think what Valerie says is smart, just appoint and then we could all look at it before it becomes right. official, but, and if anybody has any questions, but. Do we want to put in here a like, shall appoint committee members as required to carry out specific duties every, and like every two years, change them? Probably or we every year. I would say every year. Every year? Yeah. Do you want to add that in there then? Sure. Annually? Okay. Annually. Because you may get people on there that don't want to do this more than one I'm year. sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, authorize calls for special meetings and generally perform the duties of a presiding officer. Um, and then this other part in the, the Secretary of State one. Um, about being the spokesperson, we don't want that in there, correct? Or we do? I... Because really that... I did bring this up at the last bylaws committee meeting that I would like to have some way of knowing where the voice of the board is coming from. I think it really helps from the director's perspective to have a voice assigned. And I know that's also, if you look at the packet for the parliamentary training on Monday, that is typically what boards do, is they have the president be the spokesperson for the voice of the board. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but it is the typical Roberts Rules practice, is to have the board president be the liaison with the executive director. So in a situation like that, what happens if the president, let's say, isn't relaying things from other board members to the executive director, then what happens? That has to be, my understanding, is a discussion with the board on how you're going to run business and, and, and agree to things. So that's something, again, I would put this as a suggestion to the board as something we keep in here, but then the board would discuss it and see if this is how we want to run things. And right. when we say spokesperson, because when I read it just now, I wasn't thinking of between the board and the director, although that was another point I was going to bring up. But in this one, it was making me think of like with the press or the public. That's not what this is? No, this specifically says in all advisory or disciplinary action directed to the staff. That's what the wording says from the State Library. So I will say um, at Schiller Park, the board president was the person I worked with the most. She was the one who would get advice from other board members and then bring to me the direction of the board. Okay. I just worry because in, in the past, there's been times where board members were asking for items to be put on the agenda mm -hmm. and the board president wouldn't acknowledge well, it or anything else. Right. Within that, as far as items being put on the agenda, that's spelled out in the other section of the bylaws that we just talked about, saying that the, anybody can call the director and say, put this on the agenda, and then that's what we're doing as long as it's within the, within the time frame that we spelled out, right? So it's more a matter of just spelling out how we want to do things here. So do we want the president and the vice president to be spokespersons to the director? 
and have to be in agreement or because that the challenge for me as director is do I need to get direction and confirmation from all seven board members before moving forward with any advice given? No, and you shouldn't have to do that. That's that's a ridiculous amount of work for you to just be able to do your job. So I don't I, I think two people and I think as long as those whether it's president and vice president we're, we're in agreement then we go forward. Um, because even things like getting requests for projects from multiple trustees throughout an ongoing time, you know, that those are the things that maybe should come through the other one or two people, right? Is that what you're That is that what I'm requesting. To, right? whether, yeah, or not, because whether or not a request is coming from an individual trustee versus a direction from the full board and how I can clarify that. Like what what the board tells me as executive director is a direction from the board versus a request from an individual trustee that is not necessarily a direction from the board. So let me ask, and this may be something we need to ask Dennis, but legally, let's say we have X trustee wants certain documentation on something, mm -hmm. but that's not the direction of the board, but that trustee wants to understand that. Are we legally allowed to then tell that trustee, no, we're not doing that because that's not the rest of the board is okay with what's out there? Um, that would typically go to the lawyer, but most things, as far as documentation goes, it, um, I would treat it similar to a FOIA request in that if the documentation already exists, I would obviously give it to any trustee asking, trustees have the right to all of the information available in the library. The challenge becomes when it's a brand new project, work that we were not expecting to do, um, that is not typical of a job assignment, or has a very short time frame. And there are other things going on that we're trying to prioritize with staff or among the library. Maybe this is something we can talk about on Monday with the parliamentarian. Yeah, that's probably good. Mm -hmm. She might have some suggestions on how to handle that. Yeah. yeah. But I, I definitely agree. It may be one of those things that we even say if there's any special projects or things that need to come up, it needs to be discussed at the board meeting with you. So then, and then you, you get it at that point, and it's just a whole month to mm -hmm. looking to see that because somebody shouldn't be coming to you on Thursday before the board meeting saying, I need this, and it's brand new, and you have to just, you know, go find all the information. No, you shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. So you or your staff shouldn't have to do that. That's all. All I'm looking for is, is reasonable direction and one direction as the voice from the board. Right. So maybe it becomes one of those things that it can be asked for at a board meeting or the other, mm. and then discussed more at the following board meeting? There are also, um, at some libraries, there's a section um, called trustee communications in the director's report that I could also put in there. Um, a trustee has requested X, Y, Z in this time frame, does the board approve, or here are my concerns, or that I think that, that works out best. Yeah. I think I'm okay with that. The challenge that I've had sometimes are the time frames where they are requested. Mm -hmm. And so I think this does need to go in front of the full board because sometimes I'm requested to do a project right before the next board meeting mm -hmm. that um, I am asked to do because they are preparing for the board meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I understand, and I'm not trying to get in the way of operations. I just need to know whether to move forward with those requests and reprioritize other things, right. or whether to bring that to the full board, if I have concerns. I don't often have concerns. We can usually get those things done, but it depends on the scope of the project. And that becomes where it's tricky, because if somebody wants that information to vote, we need to get them the information right. to vote, but it I needs to be in a timely fashion. They need to learn how to anticipate their information requests so that they can get them in in a timely manner and, it, and you know it's not a time crunch for the staff to do it like so the only if you know something's coming up on the next month's agenda which in many times we do yeah. and sometimes we don't but if you know you know if trustees like oh well I know we're going to be talking about the budget and then waits until two days before the meeting Absolutely. to ask for something they're no, thank you. The problem becomes on like the regular meetings, if we're getting the packets, let's say on Friday, we mm -hmm. read through it over the weekend, now you have no choice but to come back on Monday and ask for what you need, and that's only 48 hours before the meeting. Right. That's where it becomes, that's where mm -hmm. your challenge comes in, because, yeah. you know, if there's something that 
I wasn't expecting, let's say, to be on, or I read through everything and I had some more questions on, now it's, well, when do I send that? Even if I send it on a Sunday, it's not going to really probably take any action till Monday. Right. And now I have the board scrambling, or the, the staff scrambling on Monday and Tuesday to get me something by Wednesday, but it's something that I may not have had the documentation. So you get into that sticky... Yeah, and I, I don't ask for it, and I am not often given the reason why something is requested. I am just told in preparation for the meeting, but I don't know if it's related to a vote or not. I just am given the request. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah, because if it's not related to a vote, then it doesn't seem quite time, as time sensitive. And I don't, I, I'm not trying to, you know, invalidate the request of a trustee by any means. Yeah. I All I can do is say this is my challenge with completing this within the time frame that is requested. And so at that point, I don't know if the board is telling me to reprioritize this or if it is a trustee who is trying to prepare for something but the board would have different opinions. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the part that I don't know. So it would be helpful to have one voice giving me direction. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's regarding a vote, I think it needs, I, as much as it's a pain, it needs to be... But how can I know? I don't well, ask and I'm not... No, no, what we could, maybe we need to make it that, let's say I was coming to you with item four on the agenda, let's just say, well, I don't have an agenda here, but item four, mm -hmm. which says discuss and vote or take action on, mm -hmm. then at least you know what I'm preparing for and which item I'm preparing for. So if it's just something that says discussion, you know you have time on that, but if it's something with a vote, like maybe we have to make that a mandatory thing for people to send to you. I don't know. I do think it's worth having a discussion about. Yeah. But anyway, it's also helpful that we get the packets on Friday because it still gives us Monday and Tuesday to at least ask questions if we need to, not that mm -hmm. we're going to necessarily get the answers depending on what the topic is. But, yeah. you know, like we get the packet on Friday, you can you know, depending on your life, if you look at it over the weekend and go through the bills, for example, yep. and then when you get questions about the bills, you know, you send an email and say, well, what is this for? And that's e generally an easy thing to answer, but. Yeah, that's, the, I mean, that's the, that's the one thing I do right away, personally, is when I get to pack it on a Friday, usually Friday night, I just look through the bills. Yeah. Then over the weekend and Monday and Tuesday, I look through the rest of it because mm -hmm. I know the most important thing is the money aspect and understanding that, so. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, I think, yeah, we have to talk about it as, as a full board. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's bring it to the full board then. Okay. Um, all right, in the Secretary of State document, the Vice President, in the absence of the President, shall assume all duties of the President. Yep. Um, in ours, it says the Vice President of the board shall, in the, yeah, of the, shall, in the absence of the President, preside at meetings of the board in which case he or she shall generally perform the duties of the president. Um, and I was going to suggest that we add um, the, do I have it here? Add a part as um, coordinate and perform new trustee training and orientation. Along, you know, something with, along with the director. Yeah, and then I had, uh, and it, I wrote down during meetings to read all motions into the record. I mean, I've been doing it anyway, so. Yeah. I don't think that's a horrible one, it's just something. You good with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I do know that, um, I believe that in the packet for the parliamentary training it mentions something along the lines of the president will usually read a motion into the record would take which takes it from being proposed by the one board member to being something that the full board would discuss so there's specific wording in there about how that is in robert's rules so maybe after the training we would have better wording if we want to transfer that authority to the vice president okay. Okay, um, so in the Secretary of State one, the, the Secretary is listed next, in ours it's not, I don't know if it matters, but 
Uh, the Secretary of State one says, the Secretary shall keep minutes of all board meetings, record attendance, and record a roll call on all votes except when a ballot vote is taken. The Secretary shall perform all other such clerical duties as may be assigned by the board. Um, and ours says, the Secretary shall keep an accurate record of all board business. The Secretary shall also serve as clerk of elections. We need to leave that in, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the secretary may delegate duties, but shall retain final responsibility. I don't know if we want to leave that in, because they don't have that many duties to delegate. Well, no. the reason for having that in, and we did have that in at my previous library as well, is because Margaret takes minutes and does roll call. Uh, That's true. Okay. Okay. Um, we also have the secretary's responsibility shall include certifying and submission of reports, ordinances, et cetera, as required by law. I would like to add the something about the executive session minutes. Yes. In there, because we're going through that issue now. Yes. Um. So maybe something of, along the lines of... Well, we don't have anything in ours about minutes. But in the Secretary of State's suggested policy, the first thing it says is the Secretary shall keep minutes of all board meetings. And we could say in accordance with laws. But do we want to have the Secretary responsible for all the minutes or just the closed session minutes? Well, if you still have the, the wording delegation. about delegating, mm -hmm. then that covers both. But I would like to put something directly in there about executive session to keep up with them mm -hmm. by law. Because like right now we're sick, we're a year out and we haven't had them done, so that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to add something maybe in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. We need to be more specific. Than I, that, would, I, think. I would say within six, making sure that they do it within sixty days, even. Yes. That gives somebody two months to be able to go through an executive session. So the secretary may delegate duties but shall retain final responsibilities. The secretary's responsibilities shall include certifying and submission of reports, ordinances, etc. The secretary will be responsible for transcription of closed session meetings. Um, I don't know how we want to word it, but. What should be responsible for having closed session meetings transcribed within 60 days 60 or 90 days uh, so actually in Illinois library district law which, or sorry in the open meetings act which is what I'm looking at now there is a full section on minutes and in the section that I'm looking at it says, a public body shall approve the minutes of its open meeting within 30 days after that meeting or at the public body's second subsequent regular meeting. So there's already time frames in here as far okay, as that. So we need to add that if that's in there. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was Open Meetings Act? That's the Open Meetings Act um, 5 ILCS 120-2.06. And then it's, I don't know exactly what section it is, but I think it's 3B. Yes, it's 3B. Okay. Where it says a public body shall approve the minutes of its open meeting within 30 days after that meeting or at the public body's second subsequent regular meeting, whichever is later. Uh, let me see if there's a section on closed uh, session minutes. So for closed session minutes, it does not specify a time frame, um, 
my interpretation of it would be the same, the minutes would need to be prepared within the same time frame. It does specify in section C2 of that same um, ILCS that I was reading that the public body approves minutes of the closed meeting that meet the written minutes requirements of subsection A of this section. So the requirement of how the minutes are written is the same. And then as far as approving closed session minutes as a public body, section 2D of that is, or I'm sorry, section D of that is each public body shall periodically meet to review minutes of all closed meetings. Meetings to review minutes shall occur every six months or as soon thereafter as is practicable, taking into account the nature and meeting schedule of the public body. I think we need to have our own. Yeah, well, I mean. It's because, so we have to comply by that, but yes. like we don't necessarily want to wait six months or however long it's practical. Well, because this is really to review isn't. the minutes, but my suggestion would be that all minutes, including those for closed session, be completed as stated in section B that it's within 30 days of the meeting or by the body's second subsequent regular yeah. meeting after closed session whichever is later that would be my suggestion so basically six, around say about two months yeah At maximum of about two months yeah, yeah. yeah. So a maximum yeah. 60 days 60 That's days yeah. Yeah. yeah all right but I would like to use this specific wording yeah. because it's in the law go for it and reference the law I'm okay with that if you want Okay, treasurer. Um, yeah, the, the two are very different, I think. Um, Secretary states says, the treasurer is authorized by the board to sign checks, shall serve on the finance committee, and shall draw up checks. The treasurer shall keep all financial records of the board. The normal depository of all financial records shall be the library. The treasurer shall have charge of the library funds and income, sign all the checks on the authorization of the board and report at each meeting the state of the funds. In the absence of the treasurer or when he or she is unable to serve, the president or vice president may perform the duties of the treasurer. The treasurer shall be bonded in the amount to be approved by the board and according to state statute requirement. The treasurer is authorized to pay salaries and insurance bills as they come due. Well, and that would help if we had didn't have a meeting one month. We do, it would. Um, mm -hmm. But what is in ours, uh, the treasurer shall keep and maintain accounts and records of the district library during his or her office. To assist in these duties, the board shall utilize the services of a qualified accountant who is responsible to the board for maintenance of financial records and reports as required by governmental agencies like tax reports, audits, etc. The board shall annually employ a certified public accountant to perform the audit of the treasurer's records. I think those are important things to have in mind. They are. Mm -hmm. So maybe both of them? I don't know. I think no. I think a combination would be great. Yeah. Because one of the things I was going to ask today was, you know, Roberto's not going to be here for the next two meetings, so who takes care of his stuff for the next two meetings? Right. Um, I know typically he does his own version of the treasurer's report, but our uh, the operational expenses are prepared by Sickage and our staff members, our business coordinator, who prepares all of our monthly finances. Um, the treasurer section of the document recommended by the State Library is usually because there are smaller libraries throughout the state that may not have business associates working for them, things like that, so the treasurer takes on this task. I know that at my, the library I came from, which was smaller, the treasurer signed every single check. Mm -hmm. okay. So. It, but the size of our operations allows for delegation, okay. and some of this has already been delegated to me in the delegation of authority to the director, and then I am allowed to delegate to staff, which is how we do it here. Okay. So it might be worth just spelling that out mm -hmm. in the bylaws. I, mean, I like what's in here, and I like what's in the Secretary of State document. I just want to make sure we have added in there something about you know, having an accountant. Do the, do the audit and stuff. And the yeah. audit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need to just blend those two together a little mm -hmm. bit, especially that that last sentence on ours, the board shall annually employ a certified public accountant to perform an audit on the treasurer's records. And that's required by law as right. well. 
then maybe we could use the Secretary of State one and add that in there. Mm -hmm. I think that makes it a nice. I, I like yeah. what we're doing with this because it's making it, there's real substance behind each thing, not just a few words and mm -hmm. that's it. So I think that's really important. Yeah, clearly defined roles for board members and board officers is really important. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, <clears throat> next in Secretary of State's are standing and special committees, which is not what's next, or is it? No, that's not what's next in ours, so we have to go back. I think. Oh, Page five. Yeah. All right, so in the Secretary of State, the standing committees shall be appointed annually. Okay, so we're on track with there. In the month of blank, and shall consist of three members, including the library director. The standing committees at their first meeting shall elect a chairperson. Special committees may be appointed by the president to present reports or recommendations to the board and shall serve until the completion of the work for which they were appointed. The standing committees shall be the finance committee, the personnel committee, the policy committee, and the building and grounds committee. The library shall be the depository of all committee reports. Uh, and then ours is got four different parts to it. Um, the board may create special committees for the study and investigation of special problems. I mean, I, the, our board hasn't had special committees since I've been on here in 2020. So, you know, and the state one here says that they're kind of like standing committees that are always supposed to be happening. So I think that... Yeah, I think theirs is a little bit more... I think we need to do that. Um, we had talked last time about having finance, finance, community, building and grounds, and safety, and these are finance, finance person, yeah, personnel, personal. policy, and building and grounds. So it sounds like we're pretty much on the same track. Yeah. Um, and then they're spelled out a little bit more in detail. But well, and then we probably do have to add into there, which I don't know when this was, but the decennial committee. Mm -hmm. Because we do have, I don't know if that's only a one-time thing and then we're done with that. I don't know if they're going to need that back again in a little time later on. They have not specified. Um, the only thing that I'm aware of is that we have to have it done within the two years. Right. Okay. So by December. So that would, that's more of a special committee okay. that came up because of, I think it's state law. Yeah. Well, in the next, the next page on the Secretary of State one actually gives you a breakdown of each committee. Right. Finance, personnel, policy, building and grounds, and then the library search, librarian search committee. Mm -hmm. Which I wouldn't right. think is a necessary standing committee only because you do that when you need a new director. It's a special committee. That, I would think that's a special committee. I'm surprised that they have that listed as a standing committee. Well, it may not be. It's under the standing and special yeah. committee oh, section. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I think it, it's probably one of their specials because they don't list it as a standing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do like the idea of the finance committee. I'm going to read that into the record. I like the um, idea of all of them. Yeah. Exactly how they're written, too. So for the finance committee, the finance committee shall be comprised of two members of the board of the library trustees, including the treasurer and the library director. The finance committee's responsibilities include, but are not limited to, drafting a pre preliminary budget or budget and appropriations ordinance for full board approval, drafting a levy for full board approval, drafting a working budget for full board approval, monitoring library investments, and implementing the library's investment policy. The reason why I really like this is because with special projects such as the levy and the budget, it would help to have a committee look at things first so that the board, the full board, does not have to commit as much time to looking over these things. Yeah. And there's, it's just a little bit more availability to get together with two members of the board than there is all seven sometimes, mm -hmm. um, at least for preliminary work. And also, for example, with the financial advisor that I'm currently looking for for the library, it would be nice to go over that with a committee 
before bringing it to the board. Although in this situation, because it's in my purview and under the five thousand, you know, I'm moving forward. But it would be nice to have the option of a committee in the future. I agree. I agree also. I mean, we have to remember committees are just that. They're committees that make suggestions. It's right. still up to the final board vote. So. Mm -hmm. yep. Or some committees are not even about board vote, but they're recommendations either to the president or to myself as the director. Yeah. But I think it, it lends a little bit more comfort to um, the rest of the board and the public that at least one or two board members were involved in some of this decision making. Of course. But it's not always just the president or just one person having to do all of this work. Right. Okay, personnel committee is, shall be comprised of two members of the Board of Library Trustees, including the president and the library director. The personnel committee's responsibilities include, but are not limited to, preparation of the annual review of the library director for discussion among the full board prior to the formal review assisting the library director in the preparation of his or her annual statement of goals and objectives for the coming year, and assuming a leadership role in the resolution of any personnel conflict that cannot be resolved by the library director. The library director is responsible for the annual review of all other library employees. Do we need to add in something about the union? <coughs> like personnel conflict that cannot be resolved by the library director and or union I don't have the union contract in front of me, um, so I don't have the language as far as whether bringing something to the board is part of their grievance process. So, but I would want, if we do add wording, I would want it to match the union contract. Mm -hmm. Of course. Let me see if I can actually pull that up. Yeah. I really like how the Secretary of State wrote this. I mean, a lot of this stuff is... It gives fantastic guidance and, like you said, a little bit more substance. Yep. You know, I think adopting the wording into ours just makes ours that much better. Mm -hmm. It's clearly defined. Like, There's no question about what the committee does and what they're supposed to do. It's here. Mm -hmm. section on it for amendments. Mm -hmm. And because we're using this so much to discuss um, during this bylaws meeting, I will upload this onto our website as an additional um, document so that everyone can see what we're talking about. That sounds great. I'm looking at our union contract and it does not mention board involvement. Um, so I would want to talk to, and I'll, I'll mention this when President Keene is back in the room, but I would want to talk to the attorneys before putting any language in there. Awesome. I'm okay with that.
So President Keene, while you were out, I mentioned I looked at the union contract. There's no specific mention of the board being involved in the grievance process. Okay. So if we wanted to add any such language or just if something were to come up, I would prefer to talk to the attorneys before making that part of the bylaws. Okay. All right, so we're to the next one. Or I do like the rest of what that says, the personnel committee, uh -huh. because it is helpful if I can't resolve something to again not have to go to the entire board and the entire board would of course be informed right but again when a situation arises that needs immediate attention it would be nice to be able to call a committee meeting a special committee meeting with 48 hours notice that type of thing mm -hmm. to get things resolved I like that it spells out how the director is going to be evaluated every year too mm -hmm. and that there's you know, there's clear directions in here on how that's going to happen and who's responsible for it instead of it just being the president or even the president not knowing what they're supposed to be doing or not doing it because who knows why. Um, yeah. yeah, it's really important to have this done up here. Well, even having an addendum to this that would show the evaluation form for the director would be helpful. I've seen that at other libraries. I had that at my previous library. Um, though at my previous library I was under a contract and it was an addendum to my contract but having that process spelled out would be really nice for me yeah yeah I mean I think the person I, I mean you were out also I said everything that they spelled out here is really great mm -hmm. on this whole page which specifies so whoever's on that board understands what that bo that committee is going to be and it, the board members understand what the committees are and right. like I don't I, I'd like to adopt this whole page here of from finance committee all the way down to librarian search committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would be so helpful, right, when you're doing the orientation with new trustees. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'd be it'd be helpful for everybody because if we have a question, even as existing board members, which committee's handling this? Or what, I mean, finance is obviously, but like, if it's a personnel thing, if it's pot, like, here's where it starts, and here's where you go to. You have, and again, <coughs> the nice part about this also could be. If I, let's say, I'll use myself as an example, if I have a question on something, I don't need to go to you then. I could even go to the chair of the committee to talk to them about it instead of going straight to you and maybe it eliminates some questions between and, and frees some time up for you as well. Or if, you, if the committee does want to come to me and you discuss first, although be careful because if you are assigned to a committee, you cannot discuss committee business outside of an official committee meeting. So you do want to come to me for these types of things. So if there's, let's say, seven people on a committee, two committee people can't discuss things it's together? The, it's the size of the committee. These committees are three. The way they're spelled out here, it's three people. Gotcha. So committee members are not supposed to discuss committee business. If, because it's so small. Because it's so small. But if we made it a five-person committee, two people could have a conversation. Then. Um. That I would want to get clear guidance from the attorneys before, because it's related to the Open Meetings Act. So it's the majority of the quorum of the size of the committee. So it depends on the size of the committee what a majority of the quorum is legally defined as. Okay. And I don't want to make that call myself as well, far as numbers, okay. you know. So that's what we have to be careful about. Um, but coming to me, so usually, Again, I, I was talking to the OMA hotline the other day, and she said that it is not typical, although it is legal and sometimes practice, but it is not typical for staff members to be assigned as committee members, so that committee members can call the director and talk about things outside of committee work and get advice. But official committee work has to be done as we are doing it now, as part of an open meeting. So we might, what my suggestion for our next board training is going to be is Open Meetings Act training. I think that would be really helpful for all of us. Yeah, so that we can some be more clear about committee work and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah, because yeah, I think some of it's so blurred. Mm -hmm. Even going through and reading as much as I have in the last year, I'm still yeah. blurred on, you know, it's like, 
like you said earlier, it's like a quorum is this, but it's this to take action, mm -hmm. and it's this, and it's like, well, which it's way do you go? It's different for every group you're in. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, nothing is the same. They've, yeah, it depends on the they've size done a great of the job. group. They've done a great job of confusing everybody. <laughs> right? So we need to even decide whether we want to have the committees be comprised of three members, or if we want to up that, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. And if we put four or five, if we make it four or five instead of three, you know, how many trustees really want to, then you're gonna, trustees are going to have to be on multiple committees, and I don't know how many people really want to, are going to actually do that. Well, I mean, we have, let's say we did every one of these committees that listed here, which are five, but only four of them are standing, so that still only leaves you four trustees. I mean, do you need more than one trust that says president and another trustee, right? Two members of the board of library trustees, including a president and library director. Hmm. Question is, do you want to even have two members of the board on there, or do you just want one member of the board on there? So you can't. You can have a two-person committee, but if one person cannot attend the committee meeting, you cannot hold the meeting. No, what I'm saying is instead of having, like let's say we had a five-person committee, mm -hmm. but you only have one trustee from the library board, mm -hmm. and the other four people show up, you still don't need a second trustee then is what I'm getting at, though. That I would like to ask the... OMA hotline about because I don't know if that would be considered a board committee then. It if is, it's I'm just one board member, then it's a board member attending a staff committee meeting. So I'm I'm on the stormboard committee across the street, and we have one trustee, mm -hmm. and it's heads of department are in there, mm -hmm. a couple of members of the community in there, and it's a, it's it's a legal. Is it an open meeting though? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's an open. Oh yeah. Meeting. Interesting. Yeah, it's right. It's held right in uh, the chambers where they hold it, and even the. Uh, Community Relations Committee, we had one trustee and we had five members of Community Relations, mm -hmm. so of the community, so, and, like, we had the head of, uh, at that point it was Tony, uh, the head of uh, Family Services was there, mm -hmm. we had the police chief there, so there was heads of departments there, but it was only one trustee. Mm -hmm. And it was still considered a board committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even uh, Economical Development and Neighborhood Renewal, we had... At that point, Andrew Shabillo, who was the former mayor, he would be there. But if he wasn't there, then there would be another trustee there. Mm -hmm. But there was never both of them there at the same time. Okay. That is something I would like to find more yeah. out about. And that, at that one, we, had, we used to have like 20, 25 people at. Mm -hmm. So that one was different. I'm just, I, I know it's possible that the committees are not clearly defined so that the sizes of committees are determined by the board and the board yeah. president, mm -hmm. but as far as how the Open Meetings Act applies is what I'm not sure about. Well, they were all open meetings still. I they know. They were still all open. Yeah. It's just you didn't have to have two or three trust two trustees. But there. I mean about majority of quorum, because when I asked the OMA hotline yesterday if you can have a committee of one, they said no but it depends on whether a staff member is assigned as a committee member versus as a staff liaison. So that's something I don't know. Yeah. If, like, a, if, a, if like somebody else from the staff who's there is, mm -hmm. is, is a committee a member, committee. I, don't, exactly. that I don't know. Yeah. I know that there was only one trustee. Every, every committee I've ever been on over there has been one trustee. Okay. And very rarely do you get, once in a blue moon, you get a trustee and the mayor there. Mm -hmm. But that was, I mean, I've been on committees over there for eight years now, mm -hmm. and maybe it's happened four or five times mm -hmm. that you've had two there. You just don't. I mean, it makes sense. It does make it easier to get business done mm -hmm. if you have one trustee and then some staff members are committee members as well. So maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe make it one trustee and one staff member, sort of like we did the, uh, the work from home committee. Yeah. Well, the work from home committee is still two trustees and a staff member currently, but yeah. Yeah, but we could do a staff member, or mm -hmm. even this committee. It's, well, there's yeah. two well, trustees these too. Yeah, these committees all have the director on them too. So yeah. You mean in addition to the director, another staff person? Like one trustee and well, two staff people? Like no, I was thinking instead of you being the staff person every time, since you just brought up a very valid point, you could be a liaison mm -hmm. so that we could discuss things with you as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe it would be 
HR, I mean, HR should be involved in personnel. Mm -hmm. HR should. Rich should be involved in building and grounds. Correct. So, and yeah. policy is probably HR also. Mm -hmm. Finance. Well, policy would normally be assistant director. Okay. If we have one. Yeah, but we don't yeah. have one right now. So yeah. that, and since Cassandra is familiar with the policies with the union stuff, mm -hmm. then that would probably be Cassandra. Mm -hmm. I mean, finance, I would, in my opinion, I'd like you to be with finance mm -hmm. just because it's the money of the library. Yeah. Um, we could say something like she'll be comprised of including the library director or their designated. Well, or, no. it would have to be assigned by you. So, or another staff member. I'm okay with Or that. another staff member yeah. is assigned by the president? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, you, yeah, then that means that the director doesn't have to do all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because, I mean, no disrespect to Valerie, right. but buildings and grounds, that should all, all be rich all day. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe we make it one member of the library board of trustees. But like the finance committee, it should be the treasurer of the board. Mm -hmm. Right. Should be the treasurer of the board and library director. Uh, personnel. Or other staff as. Or other staff right, okay. as. Uh, because what if we someday had another in-house meeting? Well, and right it's also there's. But. There was another section where it was defining the duties of the treasurer that if the treasurer's not here, I think it said the vice president acts as treasurer. President or vice president. Yeah. Right. So then somebody else would have to just fill in, which is fine. Or if you have ex officio member defined somewhere else in the bylaws, if the one assigned um, trustee can't attend, you call the ex officio member. Like I said, at my old library, I used to call the president so that we can meet quorum sometimes. Mm. Okay. okay, that's fine. Um, so then maybe we need to meet, almost like, I hate to say a position, but almost a spot on the board for an ex officiato person. So that way it's, unless you want it to always be the president, but. No, I just don't know how that works or what that actually is. So they're just a, they're actually a committee member for any committee. So they count, they're basically, I, for lack of better words, they're a standing committee member for everything, mm -hmm. but they're only a fill-in if, they can go to all the meetings, but they don't have to go and be counted. But if, let's say, Roberto can't make the finance committee meeting, mm -hmm. and let's say it was Umer, that was that person we call Umer, and Umer has to go fill in for them. So that way they can still have the committee, otherwise they won't be able to have the committee. Got it. Is that a good enough explanation, Valerie? I'm trying to look up a definition. Oh, got it. Um, so an ex officio member is a member of a body, such as a board or a committee, who is part of that, what we're talking about is committee, so who would be part of that committee by virtue of the office that they hold as part of the full board, which is why you put it in the bylaws. So you can say the president is always an ex officio member. You can say the president and the vice president is always an ex officio member of any committee. And as long as you spell it out, then you don't have to come to every meeting if you're ex officio, but you can be called or choose to attend any committee meeting because you're automatically a member of every committee if that's what's defined in the bylaws. Does that make sense? Okay. So then maybe we should put that in that we figure out two people or two positions that should two officers yeah I mean I don't think it should just be president vice president you know what I mean like yeah. that it's always again it's the same two right. people do we make it or does it even have well can we just appoint like when we vote for officers can we vote for I mean it's not an office to be ex officio but could we specifically because of the definition of ex officio you have that position by holding another position on the board. Oh, okay, so it has to be an officer. I would, I would interpret it that way. Okay. Unless you make a definition under officers that says ex officio committee member, mm -hmm. and that's assigned to a specific trustee, but you can't name okay. specific people in the bylaws because that's going to change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we need to maybe... Or... You could also put under the president's authority when you're assigning committees, you can also assign the ex officio members if you so chose. I think that might oh. be the cleanest way to do it. 
That may be the clean way to do it. Because what we had at my the, previous... They're appointing the, drug, the committee members anyways, right? Yeah. So then let's just make it that way, so that way you'd have to just appoint other people to those things. And then it doesn't have to be an officer, right? Or it still does? It, still it doesn't, doesn't okay. um, because they're a trustee, so they hold a membership on the board. Uh-huh. It's just hard to define in the bylaws, like, are you going to put your trustee number one? Trustee number one is ex officio. You know what I mean? You, you can't right. put people's names right, right in the bylaws. I'm just trying to spread the work out, you know, yeah. by not having an officer have to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Also, then, by doing it, what it, the president's allowed to assign it, then yeah. you start with the people who aren't officers and okay. work your way. Yes. Yeah. Except for like the finance that has should be the treasurer. Yep. So I would my suggestion would be like for finance committee director and treasurer and then ex officio member would be maybe vice president that type of thing if we wanted to spell it out that way but we don't have to I know finance is the one we're trying to be very particular about the other ones you can say the president will assign an ex officio member um yeah I mean I know I'm, I'm the vice president right now I'm fine doing that but I don't know if the next vice president will want to do that and right. things like that I would just say that it's ex officio I only named vice president simply because it, it, it earlier in the document it says say president the president, or, president or vice president acts as treasurer because the finances again are so important. So then I guess maybe for that one we do put down president or vice president for that as well, and then the rest of them are just That's assigned. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So the finance committee will be the treasurer or president. Slash VP. Yeah. So it is eleven thirty. I just wanna. I have to leave at twelve. Okay. So I don't know if we. We're not gonna get through the rest of this in half an hour. I don't think so. Well, I, the rest of theirs maybe. I well for the for this page the finance like the, where the finance committee is or the committee. Mm-hmm. I'd like to adopt all five committees into our bylaws. Okay, well, can I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me finish reading through this then, and then um, we can decide whatever else we can tackle by. No problem. Policy committee shall be comprised of two members of the library board of trustees and the library director. Primary responsibility of the policy committee is to develop the library policy. This policy shall include the division of responsibility between board and staff and a library material selection policy and shall adhere to the library bill of rights and the freedom to read statements of the American Library Association. Yes, that absolutely needs to be in there. <laughs> the committee shall determine the library regulations governing the use of the library and review sections of existing policy in a systematic fashion to ensure that all policy is reviewed at an internal, sorry, at an interval not to exceed three years. As a result of such policy reviews, the policy committee will make recommendations regarding additions or changes to existing policy as well as deleting policies which are no longer appropriate or of value. The entire library policy must be approved by board vote and made readily available to the public. Yes? In my experience, the policy committee has the most work of any committee. Yes, just putting sense. that on the record. So. <coughs> As I've suggested in open meetings previously, the policy committee, it might be a good idea to have on a more frequent rotational basis than other committees, just because it does involve a lot of work. We agreed to do every year though, right? Yeah, so I, think I would say. Probably, year, we wouldn't want to do it more often than that. At my previous library, they wanted to do every policy that was being reviewed oh. a different group of people, because sometimes it took six or eight months to do one policy. I mean, we've been in this committee twice now, so it's already taken several, a couple of months, right? And we're gonna be doing this again. Uh So that's why, because other, some of the committee members at my previous library said that they had to do a lot more work than other board members on different committees, the committees of which sometimes only meet once a year. Right, mm-hmm. so that was the discussion, and that might come up with our board too. I'm not sure. And what might be get tricky too, like if we did it one year or two years, or if we did it with a time instead of by policy, would be like, okay, 
you're on there for a year and you're working through this policy and it's almost finished and then you're off and mm -hmm. somebody new comes in and mm -hmm. like after we learn everything that you just did and they're going to be like, well, no, why'd you do that? And why'd you do yep. this? We and just went through that. Yeah, yeah, we just went through finalized. that selection. Yeah. 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 So. Okay, so maybe how it's. How do we fix that? Um, maybe we make it that each policy will serve a new, you know, I don't want to say a new committee because what happens if you want, you know, if some of the people want to stay on, that's the problem. Something like committee members shall be appointed every so many policies or so many months, whichever. I would say so many policies because so many months it comes into the same problem of like you're in the middle of talking about this one policy. Right, but what if one policy takes six months and one policy takes one meeting? That does happen. So, like, my committee previous members serve every four, committee members serve for three policies or 12 uh, months, but not to exceed, maybe, what were Something you Something like that. Uh, my previous library still maintained that you were assigned for a year, but those were some of the concerns that were brought up. It was just a matter of dividing the workload fairly because there are some policies that are just review and you don't make any changes right. and there are other policies like if we completely redo the bylaws and then we're going to completely be redoing some of the personnel policy it does take a lot of meetings and a lot of work so then maybe we do like a minimum of three policies or one year so mm -hmm. if it takes nine months well in nine months you get three policies done so be it thank you I like that. But it also keeps a minimum of one year because let's say we have another policy that's a short one, then from that month nine to month 12, yeah. there you go, yeah. get, get one more done. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Minimum of three policies in one year term. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be or? Three or. policies or one year. Yes. You are correct. Sorry. No, you proper grammar. You got it. It's the librarian in me. <laughs> okay. Building and grounds committee shall be comprised of two members of the board of library trustees and the library director. The building and grounds committee's responsibilities include, but are not limited to, conducting an annual inspection of the library's physical facility to identify areas which are in need of repair and making recommendations to the full board regarding any and all repairs which are deemed necessary either as a result of the annual, annual inspection or throughout the year as the need arises. Do we need to make any changes to that? I, I just think the changes even on, like, I just want to make sure that, are we going to go with one member of the what board of the library trustees? Like for all of them, it should be one at least. So that way we, again, we don't, because otherwise four committees, you're already over how many people we have. Right. So the committee shall be comprised of one, one member of the board of library trustees and the library director or other staff as appointed by the president. I fully agree. So there's only going to be two committee members. Right. A staff and a trustee. Or my misunderstanding. Well, that's how it's written, yeah. But we should probably decide how many people we want on a committee. Do we want to start involving some people from the public in these committees as well? That would be something we'd have to talk to it about. Full board, about. yeah. I think that that would make moving forward with operations very challenging because members of the public might not always be available. And if we're trying to make really important decisions that are timely, I think it, I, not to disclude the public, of course, they're open meetings and they're always willing yeah. to attend, but putting them on a committee, like even for the decennial committee, two of the three public members were not here. Yeah. Right. But if we only had a one member of the public, then we could still do it with the two people that well, were on Well, then how do you fairly choose a member of the public? There, there could, I, I see a lot of challenges with okay. that, you know what I mean? Okay. So do we want to have two staff, two member, two trustees? What do we want to do then, or do we want to bring it to the board? I, I would just leave it as two people then. You may be able to get more accomplished that way when it's only two, mm -hmm. two people's schedules that you have to work with. So one 
one staff and one trustee. Yeah. Okay. So the building and grounds committee shall be comprised of one member of the library board and the library director or other staff is appointed. And then the rest <coughs> is good, right? Yeah. I agree. All right. Librarian search committee, which is a special committee, not a standing committee. When the position of librarian, and this is not just librarian, it's like library director or executive director, mm -hmm. right? So we could change that. I think they call it librarian because that's what's in the library district law, but you can change it it's to executive clear, director. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The board shall immediately select an acting librarian for the interim and establish a librarian search committee which shall consist of the president and two members elected from the board. Applications for the position of librarian shall be filed at the library and available to all board members. The search committee shall report the results of applications and interviews to the board. Five votes shall be required for the board to hire a librarian after which the search committee is dissolved. I do think human resources should be part of this committee. Absolutely. Okay. So the search committee shall consist of the president and two members elected from the board. So not appointed by the president, but we have to elect them. Okay. And we want to add in there HR. Applications for the position of library shall be filed at the library and available to all board members. The search committee shall report the results of applications and interviews to the board. Five votes. Okay. Valerie, is there anything else you wanted to? Nope, just the addition of human resources. I think it's really important. Okay. Um, the next thing is on the next page is order of business. I actually like ours better than theirs mm -hmm. because I think ours is better. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of notes on the agenda order, actually. Okay. Um, so ours is um, ours starts with call to order, pledge of allegiance, approval of minutes, public comment, treasurer's report. So the same, they're the same. With call to order is always first. Roll call. They have a separate one. That's, okay. Yeah, this is, theirs is odd because it doesn't have the Pledge of Allegiance in here at all. You're not required to do Pledge of Allegiance. I know many public bodies do, but you're not required. Okay. And then they have, yeah, theirs is, this is the first time I'm looking at it, so give me a second. So call to order and roll call, then Pledge of Allegiance. I wanted to add approval of agenda to ours, which means that we can add things for discussion at that time if approved by a majority vote. Also, if it wasn't on the agenda, they right. could be so added. Right, so you can. You can add topics for discussion. You just cannot take action on anything that was not put on the agenda 48 hours before the meeting. So oh. they cannot be actionable. Right. So you can only talk about it. You can only talk about it. And then also, does approval of agenda doesn't mean we're taking anything off, right? It just means that we... You can take stuff off by vote. Because it's the same thing tabling? as tabling. Okay. But we should ask this question to the parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea okay. as okay. far as how that works. I know I have asked the question of the OMA hotline uh, as far as what I just said, that you can add things for discussion, but you cannot take action on things mm -hmm. that were not openly advertised 48 hours in advance. And it has to be on, on board vote, right? For if you want to add something? I did not ask that, so okay. I don't know. Um, 
I did ask the OMA hotline whether we can change agendas, and she said, per the OMA, you cannot change the agenda within 48 hours of the meeting. So I don't know how approval of the agenda would work in this context related to the OMA. So I would want to ask the OMA hotline whether approval of agenda and adding things is even appropriate for a public body. Well, I mean, what's, the, what's really the difference if you want to add something to the agenda at that point, you brought it up on the other and you had a discussion about it? Many places don't have an other section when you work with the OMA because then you're not giving notice of what's being discussed to the public. So I think it's important to ask about that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but even the Secretary, we have another, and the Secretary of State's even recommending another, yeah. so. So I don't know what the parameters for other constitute. If that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I don't know what's appropriate under other and what's not appropriate. So I know some places avoid having an other altogether. Some um, have the other like we do. I know at our last meeting we added a trustee comment section, so mm -hmm. I've seen that as well. I just, as far as, the only thing I know and the only thing I ask for is that you can't take a vote on anything that yeah. is right. added after the 48 hours. That was the question I asked. Right. So I wonder if we even put that because if we do it, we can only talk about it anyway. Yeah, but it's just kind of a safeguard for when people can't get their things on the agenda. Got you it. can at least still talk about it. I mean, it could be done in other, but. Or we could move other to higher up in the order of discussion if that's something we think this board wants. Or we could add the trustee comments like we did this last time. Instead of having an other? I have that in here too. I don't know if it makes sense to have all of them or not. Um, I think the trustee comments being higher up is, mm -hmm. I think, a really good thing, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, so I was thinking under new business we would have the director's report, officer reports, trustee reports, okay. um, and committee reports if there needs to be action. And if they don't need to, if there's no action on a committee report, then that would be an unfinished business. You want to put that all under new business? No. It's just an idea. Yeah, no, no, I'm just yeah. clarifying. Yeah. We used to put committee reports under the minutes section mm. at my old library because we would have minutes oh. from the committee meeting and uh -huh. then the committee could also discuss further what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I know currently we have some trustees that like to um, respond to public mm -hmm. comments. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we should do trustee comment after public comment. So instead of having the potential combativeness back and forth, then it's the trustees able to respond during their comment time right away instead of bringing it up later in the evening to the, go backwards. The recommendation from our attorney and the Open Meetings Act attorney and most libraries that I am aware of is that we should not be responding to public comment. Well, nobody should be responding, but we have the right to. Sure. I'm just putting that on the record. The yeah. recommendation is not to do that, and putting it into the agenda, I think, encourages it when the legal recommendation is not to do it. So that's my caution. Yeah, I, I know legal recommendation versus what legally is allowed is... I, I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a strong component of it, that you don't re re reply to the public, especially in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. But legally... Well, it's recommended we don't. Mm -hmm. Legally, we can't do nothing to stop that. No, oh, sure. but by putting it in the agenda, I think it does kind of give you that, like, well, it's kind of okay. I mean, it's not. I think it encourages it. Okay. Not that we're going to stop a trustee from saying what they would like, of course, yeah. but there's a difference, I think, between encouraging it by having it on the agenda and just allowing it to happen as it happens, if that makes sense. I guess I, I mean, I like the trust. I don't know if you want to call I mean, we can do the trustee report. I remember when I first got on the board, or even before I got on the board, it would go to every trustee, and trustees would, like, Patty would bring things up that she did, like, if it was plant swap or yarn bomb, or she would, you know, bring those things up. And I think we've gotten a little bit away from that with the other because meetings have gone long and things like that, so we've just got away from it. So I'd like to see, because it also shows the public the participation that each trustee has had. Mm -hmm within the library as well, not just, uh, yeah, I'm here for my once a month meeting, mm -hmm. but I really don't come to the library. It could be, they could bring up a book, that, I, I remember you brought up books that you have 
took it, taken out from the library in the past. And mm -hmm. So I, I just, I'd like to have some sort of thing that the trustee, I mean, you don't always have to say something. Maybe there is a right. month you don't have anything. Right. But if Patty wants to talk about the plants or uh, we want to talk about as we're going through the book sale and mm -hmm. you know getting that and the donations and, and all that, maybe mm -hmm. it's just a good spot. I don't know if it has to be at that exact spot. Maybe mm -hmm. it's down to it. Maybe it is where other is. Well, think, but we all know that if we leave other after executive session, there's never an other because we're too tired. Correct. So it should at least have moved up from that. That's okay. I'm okay with that. I mean, you could do it the way that the secretary, not the secretary, the state library recommends. Um, uh, instead of having a president's report and a secretary's report, you could just do trustee reports mm -hmm. if you wanted to. And they have that right after roll call. But I know sometimes, depending upon what happens at the meeting, I know some trustees like having other afterwards so that they can have more discussion yeah. about what happens. So I'm not sure what we would want to do. There was somebody I, that I saw. Well, sorry. I'm sorry. I, you know, I kind of feel like public comment should be, I don't know why approval of minutes is before public comment. I don't know if that's standard practice, but it doesn't make sense to me. We can switch that. I don't. I don't know the case standard practice in general. So in Warrenville, and I'm just looking at the ones that we have. It's call to order, roll call, approval, changes to the agenda, presentations, and then public comments. It actually there, if on Warrenville we'll page eight of eleven, uh, it's actually a really really good. Yeah, there's is good. Really good agenda. Their whole bylaws are good. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I had theirs mm -hmm. on top because. What pres oh, presentations like if there was an outside speaker, so, so they like have to they, stay as long. So, like the roof guy, instead right. of having to stay for an hour right. while we talk. See, and they do the consent agenda, mm -hmm. which is the, mm -hmm. the basic stuff. Yeah. I mean, but then right there you get the approval changes of, to the agenda that we were talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. And then presentation and public comments. Now, I can almost guarantee, because it's not on here, the payment of the bills is probably on the consent agenda item. Mm -hmm. It usually is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm not good something. with that, too, actually. I'm, yeah. I'm good with adopting something like this. The challenge with consent agendas is that any trustee can motion and it can be voted to take the consent agenda out of consent agenda to discuss anything in there. And mm -hmm. having been to our meetings, we typically have a lot of discussion, even for the minutes and even for the typical business. So I don't know that it's the most efficient move for our board, given the amount of discussion that we have. Well, maybe we could. I think that's the way that it should be. It should and be. Yeah. Maybe we need to make that move now while we're doing this. And you know, those are the kind of things that can be addressed before we're actually in the meeting. Mm -hmm which is what hopefully would be happening. If somebody has a, let's say in that, let's say there's four or five different subparts of consent to agenda, but they have a question on payment of bills, you just mm -hmm. pull payment of the bills out and you still approve the other four items or you have to then go through each one and approve each one? I have not had, I've not worked myself with a consent agenda before. Okay. So I'm not sure if the entire consent agenda gets dismantled or if you have to motion for each item to, to come out of consent agenda, but I could see multiple items potentially being pulled out of consent agenda mm -hmm. and those votes taking additional time. Maybe we talk, I mean, I know we only have the parliamentarian for three hours on Monday, but maybe that would be something Ask her about consent about agenda. Yeah. Her because I think that it's a really good idea. I think it would help us with our meetings. I agree. Um, I know she is I going to talk about, I, one of the trustees asked me, for her recommendations on how to save time in mm -hmm. the meetings, so that would be something good to bring up with her. Okay. Well, this would definitely help save some I time. Would. I mm -hmm. would. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to ask that we plan our next meeting. Okay. And then probably adjourn. Okay. Yeah. Work calls. Um, I was glad that we were able to schedule this second meeting so quickly, but I don't know that. You know, look, we, you and I. Or I think at some point we realized that Roberto's not going to be here for the next 
couple of board meetings mm -hmm. so that we weren't going to be able to um, actually vote on it as a board. Mm -hmm. So we aren't in quite as much of a, mm -hmm. you know, we have a little more time, I guess, is what I'm trying to say before we meet again. Or not before we meet again, but before we can vote. So, yeah, because uh, he's not here for May or June, right? Right. So, so today we'll is the 2nd of May. I can't remember, Jason. Did you say some evenings would be possible or no? Depends on the evening. Okay. Just with baseball schedules and all. If evenings are better, we could try to find one that works for all of us. Thursday mornings are still generally pretty good, too, for me. Um, Typically, Thursday mornings, I do have a supervisor's meeting. No. What nights are best for you? Um, Tuesdays and sometimes Monday or Wednesday. Um, I have open on, I don't know if you want to meet this soon again, but the 21st of May, I could do. That is the week after our board meeting. Could we maybe do the 20, or the 28th, is that the Labor Day? No, That's coming out of Labor Day, okay, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should be able to do the 21st, I think. Or I could do, well, if, I don't know what Thursday, oh, Thursday mornings you have a supervisor meeting, so we don't want to mess with that, no. no. As you say, I could do the 30th, too, but. We can do the 21st. Okay. Yeah. What time would you like to do that? Um, that is a Tuesday, how about uh, 6.30, 7? 7, so that would be. You get home and settle yeah, in? You have to shift your schedule? No, I work Tuesday nights. Oh, so that perfect. actually works oh. well for 7 p.m. 7 p.m. it is. That worked out well. Yeah, because you figure if we could get another meeting or two under our belts with this, then maybe by July we could bring this to the whole board when Roberto's back. Because mm -hmm. it's going to take some time to rewrite this whole thing also. Oh, so. <laughs> And then next one, we could finish up the, the one from the Secretary of State and then look in the trustee manual, see if there's anything we need to do. Yeah. So between now and then, I will read through all of it. I mean, not like we haven't read the trustee yeah. manual, but yeah, we can go through it individually and then. And there's not a, t I mean, I just, that was the one that I was really reviewing coming into today, and there's not much in there that I think we need to bring over, but it's good to do a review. We, yep. we took it away, so we should make sure we review it. So. Yep. All right, then I will make a motion to adjourn at 11.54 a.m. Oh, 11.55 a.m. Uh, on May 2nd. Second. Um, President Keene, do you have yes. to vote on it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Vice President Trunko? Yes. I'm a yes. We are adjourned. All right.